Come here, Franz. Yeah, there we go. All right. Welcome back, everyone. Welcome, Franz, to this new episode of explaining geographical stuff in Minecraft. Yeah. Woo. Today, we will be discussing the hydrological circle. Aren't you excited? Aren't you excited? All right, so today we'll be discussing the hydrological circle and everything to do with water. So I can use the river again. And Franz, come here. Come here. So to explain the hydrological cycle, I have made some adjustments to this area, which includes some clouds, and that's about it. So let's first start off with what is the hydrological cycle? Well, the hydrological cycle is the process by which sea water returns to the sea through evaporation and precipitation and through groundwater and rivers. So the hydrological cycle is the process by which seawater returns to the sea through evaporation and precipitation and through groundwater and rivers. So what the hydrological cycle means is that water evaporates, goes up in the sky and condensates again, turns into a cloud and eventually precipitation will cause the water to go back towards the ocean. But also this water can transport through other clouds and land somewhere else. This means that the water lands, for example, in the river or in the forest and the river will bring the water back to the ocean. Isn't that right, Franz? Yeah. So in this case, we have two different types of hydrological cycles. So we have a short hydrological cycle, which goes from evaporation in the ocean to forming a cloud through condensation and again precipitation by falling down. So if we would animate the short hydrological cycle, it would look something like this. Water evaporates in the ocean, it forms a cloud through condensation and the cloud releases the water through precipitation. And you have a short cycle, as you can see, you have a short hydrological cycle from ocean to cloud back to the ocean. Uh, so the short hydrological cycle is from ocean, cloud to ocean. So what is the other hydrological cycle we have? Well, not the short one, but a long one. And this includes, Franz, this is not so good. <laughs> Come on, get here, get over here. Get out of this delta, please. Nice, good boy. So what about the long hydrological cycle? Well, then we have to look at the groundwater or rivers. So if the water evaporates and forms a cloud above the ocean, the wind might carry the cloud above the land. Here, of course, the cloud can also cause precipitation. And so on and so on. All these clouds cause precipitation alongside the land. Precipitation, of course, can happen through Oh my god, no. <laughs> uh, all right, back to the river you go. <laughs> so precipitation can happen, of course, in liquid form. We note it as rain. But when it gets cold enough, the precipitation might also turn into snow or ice. All right, so the water went from the ocean. And instead of the short water cycle where it would fall down immediately, it transports across the land and eventually falls down in precipitation as in rain or in snow in another place, somewhere on the land. The water that was once in the ocean is now somewhere on the land and through rivers, it will transport back to the ocean. But not only through rivers does the water transport back to the ocean, it will also transport through groundwater. So the water that falls down causes, caused by the precipitation will follow the river or go underground into the groundwater. This groundwater will eventually also lead to the ocean. So not only through rivers, but also through groundwater does the long hydrological cycle work. So the long hydrological cycle works not only through rivers, but also through groundwater. Every piece of water that is on the land, such as rivers or let's say glaciers, 
or the snow in Antarctica or on top of this Minecraft mountain. Every piece of water that is now on land in form of snow, ice, water, whatever form, was once in the ocean. So this is all part of the long hydrological circle. Every glacier on the world is still part of this long hydrological circle. All right, Franz, do you still get it? Yes? All right. Let's give you a nice roof, shall we? What's up, Mr. Spider? You also here for the hydrological... Oh, oh, oh. you made new friends. No? All right. Goodbye, Mr. Spider. So if you can divide water into different sections, you will find you have salt water and you have fresh water. You will have surface water, such as rivers or lakes, or you'll have groundwater. So to divide water into different sections, you can, call, you, can, you can look at water as salty or fresh, or surface water and groundwater, or you can say it as liquid, gas, or solid. Think of this as the liquid part as water, the gas part as evaporated water, and the solid part as ice, as in glaciers. Come, come, I have to explain to you. Very important, you sit here in the middle. There you go, very good. All right, so listen up. In short, you'll have the hydrological cycle, which can be short or long. The short one happens from ocean to cloud to ocean, so this is a short cycle. And the long one from ocean to cloud to, well, this could be groundwater or rivers or any form glaciers that end up and melt inside the ocean can also happen. And from those glaciers, groundwater or rivers, it will flow back into the ocean. That's the long hydrological cycle. And if you have to classify water into different sections, you can look at water in salty and fresh. So salty in the ocean and fresh in the rivers or the glaciers or the snow that's falling. You have surface and groundwater, so the water we see on the surface or the ones that were inside the ground. And you can look at water as a liquid, gas or solid form. So water, evaporated water and ice. That is the story of the hydrological cycle. All right. Well, I hope you learned something new and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Goodbye.